Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, dear friends and colleagues, uh, dear president of our first panel. I would like to start my remarks to, by underlining the importance of the topics that will be discussed today in relation to long-term growth. Almost most exactly five years after the collapse of Lehman Brothers, the European economy still has not completely overcome the financial and economic difficulties that followed this incident. The crisis has shown us the structural weaknesses of Europe's economic and monetary union. And political omissions of the past quite plainly. Since 2009, the European institutions have shown that there is clear political consensus to tackle these shortcomings. We have a lack of regulation, we have a lack of, lack of European regulation, we have a lack of supervision, and we have a lack of, I think, personal responsibility. Together, we have worked on almost 30 different initiatives that have been proposed by the Commission in order to reform Europe's financial system and to pave the way for future stability and growth. And I must say it as parliamentarian, in all political issues where we have a community law, we solved the problems, or we in a good shape. We have problems in all politics, in the decision-making process where we need European decisions, but we don't have community law, and we need unlimited, and an unlimited majority with the member states to find a common solution. So all what we are doing is a step forward, but some of them, what we have done in the last months, not in the financial market regulation, but to solve the crisis, must be in the future, we have to change the treaty, and we need more community law, and we need all political instruments in the connection to the political projects uh, of the European Union also. So on the level of community law. Uh, for example, we have set new rules for the operation of credit rating agencies. We reformed the European financial supervision system by introducing three new European authorities for the supervision of financial activities, which started their work in 2011. We have set new rules for OTC derivatives and hedge funds and are currently working on finalizing some very important dossiers, such as the MIFID II dossier. But most relevant for today's discussion, we have agreed on the Basel III implementation in the form of CRD4 and CR for which I am accountable as the Parliament's rapporteur. The single rule book for banks that will enter into force on January the 1st, 2014, strengthens the European banking sector significantly by ensuring that the credit institutions are capitalized well and that they are stocked with liquid assets. Why do I highlight this aspect? I highlight it because it is directly linked to the question that this panel will discuss. How can the banking sector contribute to long-term growth? As you are all well aware, businesses, especially SMEs, remain the backbone of the real economy. The European single market is driven by its 23 million SMEs, which amount for 99% of all enterprises. Due to their great relevance for economic recovery, 
It is of utmost importance that SMEs have the financial capacity to make the impact necessary to restore economic growth. Even the stuff we have already said and will continue to work on initiatives to broaden the financing base for SMEs and for all other enterprises, the real economy in Europe is still mainly financed by credit to an extent of 80%. That is a main difference to the United States and to the Anglo-Saxon area. Our real economy, the SMEs, are credit financed and the economy in the United States is 80% and more investment financed. Uh, the 15 largest banks in the United States have the capital of 80% of all citizens and we in the European Union have 80,300 banks and different banking models, uh, cooperative banks, saving banks, a very strong decentralized banking sector and that is one of the reasons why we need based a, st a stable banking system in the relation to our real economy and to support the real economy for growth and employment. We therefore need it to make sure that there is a sound capital basis within the banks so that we can be certain they can fulfill their core business, financing and the real economy. In addition, we have managed to introduce with the CER another incentive for banks to lend to SMEs, an incentive which, as Eric van der Blatz can confirm, was one of my core political demands in this dossier, the so-called balancing factor, which will make sure that the costs for SME loans will be gapped on the level of Basel II and will therefore be cheaper in relation to other loans. The single rule book together with the other pillars of the, of the banking union, which are currently negotiated, will make Europe's banks stronger. Therefore, these measures ultimately contribute to the creation of future economic growth. Ladies and gentlemen, however, we have to be very careful. The regulation of financial markets was a necessary step that I fully support. What we need to ensure now is that the combined effects of regulatory effects don't hinder our goal of achieving future growth. This has also been pointed out by the Commission in its Green Paper on Long-Term Financing of the European Economy. For example, banks have to fulfill the higher capital requirements of the CER. In some countries, they are banking levies. The SRM will introduce a European Resolution Fund and 11 member states decided to go forward with the introduction of the FTT. While I agree that all of these measures in principle make sense, we have to make sure that they are applied coherently. Otherwise, we run the risk of unintended cumulative effects that contradict our goals. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come a long way since 2009. It is now my Parliament's responsibility to keep the hard work going until next May and together with the co-legislators finish as many tasks as possible. For this, I count on your support. I think we have no time. We are in the end of the Lithuanian presidency. The next half year we have election time and we have the Greece presidency. The banking union is not ready. We have the class half, 
half full, 50%, Basel III and the new supervision. We are working on the fiscal union, but more on an intergovernmental way as an, an, on a European way. I have to go next week to uh, Vilnius to discuss with the national parliaments the cooperation between national competence and European competence uh, on the basic of our political agreement in the fiscal union. And we need more incentives, not only from the banks, and more capital to create growth and employment and to solve other problems. And so we need you on board. We have to push all politicians on the national level and on the European level. You have the European Parliament on your side. Uh, when on your side for new in initiatives and to, uh, yeah, to finalize all initiatives and proposals we have now on the table. We will do our job, but we need your help. Thank you very much.